Hey, and welcome to my channel about living in and moving to Denver, Colorado. The perfect time to do this video is the start of summer, so we're gonna talk about things you can do around the Denver Metro in the summer. Let's get into it. Katie Martineau, also known as The Real Estate Gal. If this is your first time tuning into this channel, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified every time I release a video, which is twice a week. I cover events that are going on around town, neighborhoods to check out, and give you the good, bad, and the ugly about Denver Metro in Colorado. And as mentioned, I am a licensed real estate agent in this state, so if you need help with buying, selling, or anything in between, I'm your gal, would love to help you guide through the process and help you choose neighborhoods and locations that are gonna be a really great fit based off of what you're looking for and your lifestyle in Colorado. We'll start off the video on a little bit of a bittersweet note. If you're local to the area, you've heard of Bandemir Speedway. It just announced that it is closing after this season. So if you're watching this video in 2024, just ignore this little part, but you can still take advantage of going to Bandemir Speedway. There are 200 mile per hour cars, 290 per mile jet cars. They have events throughout the summer that you you can check out with different types of drag racing, national competitions, such as the NHRA National Western Conference. It is a perfect spectator sport that can host 23,000 people. And Bandemir Speedway has been around for over 63 years. It's located near Morrison and it backs up right to the Hogbacks. So if you haven't gone to Bandemir Speedway before, you gotta check it out this year before it closes. onto something that we know is going to be here for a little while is Elitch Gardens. It is a theme park with roller coasters, thrill rides, a water park. And if you're driving on Interstate 25 passing downtown Denver, you can't miss it. The roller coasters fill the skyline. They have a nice place for kiddos. They have a ton of different food options, shopping, arcade games, your typical theme park, if you will. They also sell season passes and they do events throughout the year, such as fireworks on certain nights. And Halloween is one of their big attractions as well, because you can dress up and trick or treat while you go on the rides. So Elitch is a great place to cool off if you wanna go into the water park area or if you go up Interstate 25 a little bit further to Federal Heights, you're gonna find Waterworld. Waterworld is a giant theme park that is really well laid out with different pockets. You got the Lazy River, you have water slides, thrill rides, really anything that has to do with water. You could spend all day there and it's really awesome that you can rent cabanas and bungalows and just chill for the entire day. It's a really great family friendly activity to do in the summer. You gotta bring water. In the state of Colorado, you'll get dehydrated a lot faster and we're also super close to the sun so I would recommend that if you're bringing kiddos with you that you have the shirts that have the SPF in them and what I always forget to do is to reapply sunscreen we are a mile closer to the sun you burn a lot faster and it's actually one of the facts that the newscasters will say when they're talking about the weather is how long you can probably predict until you get a sunburn so hats sunglasses sunscreen hydration and there are about two months in the middle of Colorado summer that it gets blistering hot so water world is the perfect place to cool off. Now, if you need something to do to cool off or get out of the sun, I do want to highlight Meow Wolf. It is an amazing museum. It's practically one of a kind. There are a couple others. I think there's one in Las Vegas and then there's one in Santa Fe, but it is Denver themed five floors of just interactive sculptures and a lot of artistic expression. It's a little tricky to describe to people if they haven't been there before, but it's essentially five floors of different themed rooms that you can touch and feel and interact with different characters that are walking around, which are paid actors. There's secret doors to different rooms that have different themes. It can be a little bit overwhelming if you've never been to a Meow Wolf before, so look up some photos or check out some of the B-roll that I have highlighted but it's a great way to entertain, get out of the sun, and see different Colorado themes with artistic expression.
speaking of artistic expression, there are a ton of different types of concerts and musical performances by local artists. And there are a fair amount of places that have concert series, such as the Denver Botanic Gardens and Hudson Gardens. So these are amazing gardens to walk around to see the beautiful flowers. You should also check out their event calendar because they host different public concerts throughout the summer. Hudson Gardens offers a free concert series that can host about 3,200 people. You can bring lawn chairs, they have food trucks. It's free and open to the public and they also have free parking. Hudson Gardens is located right off of Santa Fe if you're going down to Littleton. So you can set up your lawn chair and blankets and maybe bring some dinner and then walk around the gardens to see the beautiful flowers. Another option would be the Denver Botanic Gardens on York Street. This is gonna be really close to downtown. It's actually on the other side of Cheeseman Park. And they also host events and concert series. You do have to pay admission to get into York Street. They have a little bit of parking, but you can just expect that a ton of people are gonna be showing up. So you're gonna to have to walk a little ways. Or if you have a membership there, you get in for free for the concerts. One of my favorite things about the Denver Botanic Gardens is you can host weddings there, events there. There's all sorts of different nicks and crannies. Like little gazebos that you'll find or koi fish ponds and they even have a glass blown sculpture by Chihuly which is a famous glass blower and he has a museum that's in Seattle he's just amazing at what he does so if you haven't heard of his work I would definitely look that up but there is a really cool sculpture that is outdoors at the Denver Botanic Gardens two other concert series that I'd recommend is Levitt Pavilion offers free concerts throughout the summer months and then there's Jazz in the Park which is at City Park every Sunday about about six o'clock near the boathouse. That's where they perform, but you can really hear the music because they amplify it all around the lake that's right in front of it. They'll have a ton of different types of food trucks. And then people will bring their picnics, volleyball nets, spike ball. That's a really great family activity to do. Another really fun thing to do in the summer, which is one of my favorite things to do, is go to a Rockies game at Coors Field. That is gonna be located right downtown Denver. And even if you don't like baseball, that is a place to go and just people watch and watch the sunset. We have a gorgeous rooftop that you get to see the sunset behind the Rockies during the night games. They also made some upgrades in the last couple of years. So if you go to the very top of the rooftop, which is open to anyone who has a Rockies ticket, they have a bar that has little black discs on it that you can put your phone and it'll actually charge your phone. And then the cup holders are chilled cup holders. So it's copper plates that get super duper cold. So when you put your beer or drink in there, it actually chills it and keeps it cold. It's normally a little bit of a fight to get right on the railing for the rooftop because you have amazing views of downtown Denver, the baseball game, as well as the sunset. So get there a little bit early. And they actually have, I believe it's $3 beers for two hours before the first pitch. Tickets are pretty inexpensive. And so you could even just get a ticket and go and drink for the duration of the game, socialize, network, or say hi to our mascot, Dinger, which is a Triceratops. He's super Super interactive with fans and kiddos with taking photos dancing and keeping the vibes lively if it's a sunny day I highly recommend sunscreen because we do not have a covering over the stadium so it can get pretty hot but we do have ice cream to cool off and then there's some other really great food options such as famous Dave's pulled pork sandwiches chocolate dipped strawberries dip and dots and then your typical ballpark food Last but not least, there are so many fitness things to do in the summer. So I'm gonna name a couple. If you're interested in getting moving and grooving, we have Yoga on the Rocks, which is at Red Rocks Amphitheater. And I believe it's every Saturday and Sunday morning where just a ton of people will go to Red Rocks. It's free to enter into the amphitheater if you wanna do workouts on the stairs. You might have to pay for the yoga itself. You get a set of headphones and then you can actually hear the instructor guide you through everything. So the volume is and amplified. So if you aren't participating in the yoga, it's really fun to see everybody move and do the same thing, even though you can't even hear what the instructions are. So as mentioned, you can also do workouts on the rocks. And so when I first moved here, I was part of a CrossFit group and we went to Red Rocks and created our own workout. So we had to do five burpees, 10 push-ups. We would run across the stairs. There are these planter boxes that kind of hold trees. And so we'd have to push ourselves on top of one of those and then do the same thing 
run across, go up a flight, and then run across. And so you really get winded because it's not easy to work out in elevation if you're not used to it. There's also a ton of fitness classes that you can do outside. There's yoga in the park, such as yoga at Sloan's Lake. If you saw one of my other videos about the top lakes to look for in the Denver Metro, you'll probably remember that there's a ton of paddle boarding, kayak rentals, people go boating at Chatfield Reservoir, Cherry Creek Reservoir. There's some places in Bear Creek that you can do water sports and activities and kind of lay out on the beach. Most of our beaches are man-made beaches, but nonetheless, enjoy the Colorado sun. We have 300 days of sun. You gotta take advantage of it. Any other recommendations of what you love to do in the state of Colorado during the summer months, please comment below. I'd love to add that to my next video. Those 300 days of sun makes people a lot more social and outgoing is what I find. And even if you don't have anyone to do these things with, I would recommend Facebook groups. There's one I'm part of that's Denver Actives 20s and 30s, and people are posting all the time to go to the mountains to go hiking or paddle boarding, or there's a Sunday meetup of some girls that just walk Wash Park. It's right in the center of everything, and it's just to network and get to know each other. You have more friends in order to do all these things with. So if there is anything that I can help with, with guiding you in the right direction of events, or as mentioned in real estate, I would be more than happy to do that. My contact information is below. Feel free to call, text, or email. And then if you have haven't done so already, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified every time I release a video, which is twice a week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later this week.